everyone my name is shubham alok i am a practicing vedic astrologer welcome to my youtube channel today i am going to talk about something that many of practicing astrologers of current generation are unaware about that is yoga tara maybe you know that in astrology we read the zodiac zodiac is taken to be a circle or an oval Hypothetically, every circle or an oval have a 360 degree value that our zodiac also have. And then this zodiac is divided into 12 rashis, uh, measuring 30 degree each, or 27 nakshatra, measuring 13 degree containers each. So what our sages have done is they have divided the sky into span of 13 degree 20 minutes, 27 span as such. And whatever stars, etc. fall in that span, they have, imag they have imagined those stars to make a particular shape. So basically, they have imagined invisible lines between them, made them into a shape, and decided the nature of those nakshatras, those portions, in accordance with the shape. This has been tested time through. By practitioners of Vedic astrology, it is being practiced for more than 7,000 years now. But the basic point is, in every nakshatra, there is a main star. So basically, nakshatra is a group of stars, right? Any nakshatra have from one star to 20 plus stars, right? I think Revati have more than 20 stars. or Shatabisha, uh, some people say have 100 stars, basically it is one bright star. Right. So, nakshatras have anywhere from one star to around 20 or even more than 20. Now, out of these stars, now you understand this point, in this complete 30 degree 20 minute, the complete area is not filled up by stars. In this section, a particular area only has some stars. Those group of stars are joined with an hypothetical line to form an image, as I have already told you. Now, out of these stars that make up the nakshatra, the most bright one, the most biggest one is the Yogatara. Yogatara means the prime star, most important star. This is, this, this is for every nakshatra, the prime star, right? Now, the thing is, <clears throat> this is the best point of this nakshatra. And this is why I wanted to share with you. Though I have taught this in my nakshatra course, to be very honest with you, and one of my students from the nakshatra course specifically called me one day to mention that, sir, I have taken your nakshatra course, I have gone through all the videos that you have given. So basically, this is a long course. Some, I think, 25, 30 classes we have done, 20 more classes to do. He told that, sir, I have seen through the 15th class. You know, and I have seen your Yogatara class. I have gained much in Mercury Dasha. My complete life changed. No one in my family has seen success. I was the only one to succeed. But still up to this extent, I have been to many people. No one was able to explain this success in the Dasha. But using your principle of Yogatara, I actually found my answer regarding why I got this particular success. So, you know, in astrology, people generally square you, scare you, sorry, scare you with bad yoga, skala shirpa yoga, conductioni and all these things are there. But it is very rare that people talk about good conditions. You know, bad conditions are there, kala shirpa yoga, this... Uh, conduction uh, aspect of malefaying and all these things are there, but what are the good factors? There are many good factors as such, and out of all of those good factors, the best factor is Yogatara. If you remember, in one of my video, I have specifically talked about that if two planets go into a planetary war, it is the most detrimental condition, right? Still, to be very honest with you, planets going into a planetary war is the most detrimental, worst condition for any planet to happen. This destroys almost everything in the uh, everything that the planets are to give. This is very detrimental, very bad. I have talked about it in the video. 
a bad condition for which there is no exception but one that is yoga dharma planets into a planetary war even they go into you if they go into yoga dharma even the worst malefic result is all gone even if planets are combust but if the combust planet goes to yoga dharma or sun the planet which is making them combust goes to yoga dharma the bad result of combustion is not felt yoga dharma is so good yoga dharma is so good that it is like drinking the nectar it makes the planet very powerful it makes the planet very prominent and if you follow this planet which is falling near yoga dharma you are sure to succeed in life this is the planet who is the key to success in life who is the key to goodness in life it is the key to long lasting name fame status you have to follow this planet you have to be like this planet whatever karma you do related to this planet is something that will make you immortal we will see a few horoscopes on that but first of all the most important thing the yoga dharma degrees the yoga dharma degrees that i am telling you is based on my own original research taking into consideration many factors right so these degrees that you see for all the 28 nakshatras including abhijit is my own research the yoga dharma of ashwini nakshatra falls in 8 degrees of aries of bharni nakshatra in 20 degrees of aries kirtika nakshatra yoga dharma 7 degrees of taurus rohini nakshatra yoga dharma 19 degrees of taurus मृगाशिरा नक्षत्र योग तारा थ्री डिग्री ऑफ टॉरस अद्रा नक्षत्र योग तारा सेवन डिग्री जेमिना है पुनर्वसु नक्षत्र योग तारा थ्री डिग्री कैंसर पुष्य नक्षत्र योग तारा सिक्सटीन डिग्री कैंसर असलेशा नक्षत्र योग तारा नाइनटीन डिग्री कैंसर मघा योग तारा नाइन डिग्री लियो पूर्व फाल्गुनी ट्वेंटी फोर डिग्री लियो उत्तर फाल्गुनी योग तारा फाइव डिग्री वर्गो हस्त योग तारा ट्वेंटी डिग्री वर्गो Chitra Yoga Tara is at the junction of Virgo and Libra. That is precisely zero degrees of Libra. Swati Yoga Tara nineteen degrees of Libra. Vishakha Yoga Tara three degrees of Scorpio. Anuradha Yoga Tara fourteen degrees in Scorpio. Jesta Yoga Tara nineteen degrees in Scorpio. Mula Yoga Tara first degree of Sagittarius. Purvashana Yoga Tara fourteenth degree of Sagittarius. Uttarashana Yoga Tara twentieth degree of Sagittarius. Abhijit Yoga Tara you are right. Twenty sixth degree Sagittarius, Shravan Yoga Tara, tenth degree of Capricorn, Dhanishtha Yoga Tara, twentieth degree of Capricorn, Satyajit Yoga Tara, twentieth degree of Aquarius, Purva Bhadra Prad Yoga Tara, twenty sixth degree of Aquarius, Uttar Bhadra Prad Yoga Tara, seventh degree of Pisces, and lastly the Yoga Tara of Ashwini Nakshatra is at the twenty ninth degree of Ravati, that is the conjunction of Aries and Pisces, Pisces and Aries instead, what I should say. now what is the span when you consider the planet to be in yoga dharma if the planet is at the exact degree the planet is exactly in the yoga dharma that gives the complete result of planet being situated in yoga dharma then we will shortly see other than that i take a span of 5 degrees Planet placed under two degrees from the yoga dharma, two degree plus two degree minus is closely conjunct to yoga dharma, or anywhere between two degree to three degree, either before or after the yoga dharma, should also be considered with respect to, should also be considered conjoined to yoga dharma, but it is a loose connection to be honest with you, right? This is the span that I basically take and. to illustrate how this yoga dharma is work how this yoga dharma works how this yoga dharma should be used i will take two horoscopes one of mahatma gandhi and second of steve jobs and we'll show you how it works but most important my basic point is yoga dharma makes you immortal if you follow the planet who is situated in yoga dharma or near yoga dharma secondary to that you cannot say that it will not give bad result the planet can give bad result but it will give you greatness also that the first point and secondary point is this planet even if they have any type of affliction any type of weakness that weakness will be curtailed off 
the weakness of the planet will be lost. The planet will become powerful. For an example, see the horoscope of Mahatma Gandhi. In the horoscope of Mahatma Gandhi, Saturn, in the fourth house, that is at 19 degree of Scorpio, in the Jeshka Yogatara, which falls in 19 degree of Scorpio, is at Yogatara, and other than that, Ketu, at 12 degree of Capricorn is very near to Shravana Yogatara, that is at 10 degree of Capricorn, as I told you, 2 degree span plus minus I take. So, because Shravana Yogatara is at 10 degree of Capricorn, from 8 degree of Capricorn to 12 degree of Capricorn, I will take planet to be in conjunction with Shravana Yogatara, right? This is what I am doing right now. Also, only these two planets are there. Other planets are not in Yogatara as such. But if you see the ascendant of Gandhiji is at 5 degrees of Libra and Chitra Yogatara is just at 0 degrees of Libra. So ascendant is also very near to Yogatara. Now you see one point. Saturn is into Yogatara and Ketu is into Yogatara. To predict the result through Yogatara, house lordship you can ignore also. The nature of the planet is important. The nature of the planet is what makes you immortal. For a particular example, Saturn being in Yogatara for Gandhiji, the salt movement, Dandi March of Gandhiji, which was walking barefoot, is what made him popular. Many people joined him and he gained public support and respect. This was a very great an event. And even foreigners, Refer to it with great regard. Secondarily, Ketu, which is in the fourth house. Now, Ketu indicates spirituality. Or rather, you say self-sacrifice and all these things. Because of this particular reason, despite the fact that Mahatma Gandhi was a politician, not a spiritualist, but still he is much regarded as a spiritualist. And he is spiritually followed by many people also. Right? So following Saturn, following Ketu is what have given him greatness, is what have given him, what have made him immortal. Now keep in mind that Saturn goes to the Yogatara. Saturn is the fifth lord. However, the relationship of Gandhiji with his children was not very great. Secondarily, it is also the fourth lord. Even the family life of Gandhiji cannot be told to be very, very good as such. The basic point I am making is it is the natural signification of the planet that leads you to greatness. And one more point I have made before, that was the Dasha Antardasha of this planet also gives you much greatness, right? Other than that, there are more uses to it, which I precisely teach in my Nakshatra course. So let's leave it for the course, right? And you see another horoscope that is of Steve Jobs. Now, in the horoscope of Steve Jobs, ascendant is 28 degree Leo. This is close to Purva Palguni Yogatara, right? Only 4 degree difference. To be very honest with you, Lagna indicates complete personality. See, there are few, there are many politicians. Gandhiji is different. There are many successful people. Steve Jobs is different. People want to become like Gandhi. People want to become like Bhagat Singh. So for this approach to happen that people want to become like you, the Lagna have to be near Yogatara. If the Lagna is not near Yogatara, but other planets are there, in that case, people will want to have that particular quality like you. For an example, Mahatma Gandhi having Saturn near Yogatara, People want to be karmat, like Mahatma Gandhi. That thing. Secondarily, Saturn is into Libra. Saturn is at 27 degree Libra, not close to Yogdara. Venus is at 27 degree of Sagittarius, very close to Adhijiti Yogdara. Now, Venus indicates sophistication. 
Venus indicates luxury. Venus indicates beauty. This is the thing for which Steve Jobs is known even today. iPhone is considered as a luxury phone. He marketed it as an upmarket product, something which is owned by sophisticated people. Right? Also, you can say that because it is the 10th Lord, he got good success in professional life. Right? It is the third lord also, but there is nothing much significant that happened with respect to children, etc. in the horoscope of Steve Jobs. But because third lord goes into Yogatara, he had to struggle a lot also. The basic point that I have emphasized with you before as well. Then the house lordship of the planet falling in Yogatara does not matter much. The natural signification of the planet only matters. Even the fact I should tell you that Steve Jobs actually had a secret affair and an illegitimate child out of that secret affair. But many of you do not know about it. It haven't impacted his name, fame, status, whatever you say. This, this you can read in Wikipedia itself what I'm telling you. Right? This is the magic of Venus going in Abhijiti Yogatara. Exactly 26, Venus is 27 degree and this Abhijiti Yogatara is 26 degree. Very close. This make him, you know, th this give him this particular personality that people, despite that this particular thing, Steve Jobs having an affair and an illegitimate child out of it, is a well-known fact that is written in Wikipedia, but it have not impacted his personality. It, it have not impacted his name, fame, status, or whatever you say. At nine degree Capricorn, there is Sagittarius. Uh, so in nine degree Sagittarius, there is Rahu which is not near to Yogutara at all. In the eight, sixth house, there is Mercury at 20 degree Capricorn, which is exactly in Dhanishtha Yogutara. And you know what? Mercury is known for marketing. Marketing. Mercury is known for intelligence. Mercury is known for speech. This is precisely why Steve Jobs is much respected and much known for. He is known for his speeches. He is known for his motivation. He is known for his marketing skills. A uh, partner of Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak said that, you know, uh, very, very closely related to Steve Jobs, he said that I have seen no better salesman than Steve Jobs. Right? So he's known for his salesmanship, Steve Jobs. And this is because he has Mercury in Yogatara. Basically saying, Venus and Mercury near Yogatara have made Steve Jobs immortal because of the significations of Venus and Mercury and the Dashantra, the Shah of Venus and Mercury will prove very beneficial, should have been proved very beneficial for Steve Jobs. The basic point, if you have a planet in Yogatara, this is something very lucky to have. And generally people having planets near Yogatara specifically in Yogatara or one to two degrees after or before Yogatara, you have an exceptional horoscope and you are going to do something great in your life without any doubt. Take a guarantee from my side. What you have to do is you have to follow the significations of this planet, natural signification. You have to work related to natural signification of this planet. And as you focus and work, towards the natural signification of this planet, it will lead you to greatness as it have led Steve Jobs and Mahatma Gandhi to greatness and it will make you immortal in the world. People after you will follow you for what you have done with respect to the signification of these planets which are in Yogatara. And last but not the least, if the planets are in Yogatara or near Yogatara, the Dasha and Dasha of those planets are revolutionary and life-changing. I have seen people completely leaving their jobs, like someone left and left a high government job to start a business and in the Dasha of planet which was near Yogatara and have exceptionally been successful. And all such life-changing results also come in the Dasha and Dasha of planet which is near or into Yogatara. These are those faithful degrees of Nakshatra which have the power to make you shine bright as stars sign in the sky in this world. This can make you immortal. So if you have one such planet in your horoscope, follow the planet.
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग द वीडियो नमस्कार